Let's explore first the experiences and career tracks of those at the top, the so-called state engineers, and then later follow the emergence of the lower level engineers, a story that's considerably more complicated. In exploring the rise of engineering in France, the first point to understand is that engineering emerges in the sector of state operations called the military. As the historian Ken Alder argues, quote, French engineering was born of a marriage of the, of the enlightenment rationality and the military needs of the state, end quote. Alder's book, Engineering the Revolution, is a sustained account of the rise of engineering in the midst of the old French regime and of the key role played by engineers in the First Republic. The concept of the engineer, Alder reminds us, originated in the Italian Renaissance, with the term applying specifically to, to experts in the new weapons that use gunpowder. As late as 1694, the end of the 17th century, the French Academy defined an engineer, an ingenieur, as, quote, one who invents, sketches, and conducts the works and instruments for the attack and defense of fortifications, end quote. It's about weapons. Even by the mid-1700s, the mid-18th century, the Philosophes Encyclopedia still referred to engineers exclusively in military terms. However, now there was a key additional change. The account emphasized the many mathematical and technical subjects that engineers needed to master in order to do their work. According to Alder, the key military development during the 18th century, exemplifying and, and stimulating the development of French engineering was a shift in the techniques of warfare. From the long-standing form of siege warfare to more mobile forms of engagement. And crucial to this development was a shift in the weapons and in the practices and in the personnel and status of the artillery. France had built its strength through these long-term siege wars that were based on big guns. Alder now, quote, siege warfare was a display of power that brought the logistical capacities of the absolutist state to bear on points of resistance. In other words, think about boundary work around the, uh, around the margins or the edges of the absolutist state. Continuing, aerial bombardment undercut urban privilege and aristocratic values, end quote. So it was about the absolutist state. By the end of the 17th century, Cartesian science, drawing followers from, of Descartes, had made its way into this world, chiefly as a means of establishing and maintaining order. Remember the, the, the Cartesian association of mathematics with, the, with order and nature. Again, Alder, quote, for its Cartesian administrators, standardization and science offered a bulwark against chaos within their core and the destabilization of the regime that they served. End quote. In other words, mathematics is important here, but it stands for order. Now, at the same time, a siege was very much a bounded mode of warfare that was defined by a whole variety of rituals and really involving a massive organizational effort. Alder again, quote, its science was a patina of geometry, in other words, mathematics, superimposed on a wealth of craft knowledge, limited destruction, end quote. So, in other words, an emerging science here of, of, of siege warfare is bringing geometry added on to a previous array of craft knowledge. In this world, the artillerists, the organizers of the artillery, were not of high status. The artillery service was a minor branch of the military because it did not involve direct engagement and provide uh, the, uh, the opportunities for honor through, <coughs> through warfare. 
Now, traditionally, the military leadership <coughs> was organized by the nobility. The nobility actually owned their troops. Early on, this, dis, 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 this distinction was marked by the fact that the nobility were mounted and thus had an advantage over the troops who were on foot, an advantage that later was neutralized by the development of the gun. Over time, mathematics and mathematical theory played an increasing role in this traditional system. For example, an emergent ballistics theory placed, you know, came to place limits on what could be achieved in practice. Fortresses were built according to principles of geometry. Even engagement was theorized increasingly as, as, as evidenced by, by the choreography in, in one system that stipulated, stipulated that it should take 48 days to successfully conduct the siege. No more and no less. Alder again, quote, in time, the prescriptions of theoreticians became the standard against which participants measured themselves, end quote. So as Alder tells the story, the, the, French, the French had been hopelessly outflanked during the Seven Years' War by a Prussian military that had been armed with mobile guns, not the, sta the, the set guns of the, of the French. And this loss prompted a change, uh, a shift, a switch to a new vision of warfare. An, now an aggressive war of movement uh, a vision that between 1763, which was the end of the Seven Years' War, and 1789, the French Revolution, dramatically repositioned the artillery into the center of a new kind of military system, a new kind of military structure. This new system included, most importantly for our purposes, the emergence of a new mobile artillery depending heavily upon mathematics for its predictive value and dependent on heightened reliance of a new kind of officer, an officer who gains status by virtue of his training and by virtue of his knowledge, the knowledge gained through training, rather than by virtue of his blood. Unlike the honor and the courage of the line officers, officers on the front lines, the responsibilities and the capabilities of the artillery command increasingly involved control over the material world control over nature. In other words, another way of putting it is that a commitment to reason as a way of apprehending and then, and nature and then applying it to society was working its way into the interior spaces of the monarchy, of the absolutist system, drawing the military further and further away from personal control of the monarch and shifting what counted as valuable. So Alder's main thesis then is that that this interior development inside the absolutist state nurtured a contradiction that eventually would lead the old regime toward a state of collapse. In, th in other words, then the, s the French Revolution, often glorified as, as about uh, um, a transformation of society in pursuit of equality, wasn't only an expression of resistance by, f by first the nobility and later commoners, but was also a product of, of an internal struggle inside absolutism with the 18th century, a struggle born out of this 18th century commitment, growing commitment to reason. <coughs> 